The milk guy's getting paid. The potato chip guy's getting paid. The beer guy's getting paid. Every fucking body's getting paid. And you look through me, you fuck. I got it. I got it. It's really here. What's happening, people? Back for another session. It's been about a two week, week break since I've been at the casino. Just come back from a ski trip, so I actually caught a little bit of a cold. It's not too bad, it's good enough to be out here playing some cards. Ah, let's get into it. Right, here we go. We currently are down 20 quid as we pick up the first hand for the vlog, which is the big slicks. One limp before us, I raised the 12 and both cut off and button call. And then Small Blind decides he wants to free bet to 80 quid. And we have an important decision to make if I was playing this game with the bit more knowledge I have today. I think the best play here would be simply jam as it's a very large raise, which to me usually means it's not aces, could be kings at best. But I'm not playing this hand today. This game is from over a month ago and I'm trying to catch up with turning around my content as fast as possible. Anyway, I actually call, which being in position, uh, at least it's not terrible. We go heads up, flop comes, jack five, queen, two clubs, he checks and I decide to check it back. I think I prefer a very small bet for myself here. Turn comes a complete blank. Now he bets third pot. I think this spot over for about two minutes, longer than I should really, and I end up calling it. River comes, another blank, and he's all in. Of course, I fold now. Looking back at this hand, I think as played, just fold turn as could even be running into sets. And don't think he has very many bluff combos that lead turn, as I think most of his range will be showdown driven hands. After that damage, we are knocked down to a £135 stack. And before I get the chance to top up, we find ourselves picking up pocket jacks in the big line. Two limpers and a cutoff raise to £15 before the action is on us. I think with our stack depth and being out of position, there is only one option here, which is to jam. As expected, first limper folds, but Keith fancies a gamble and calls after limping and cutoff folds. So I'm feeling pretty good about our hand. He's got it, he's after the dealer shows one of the worst flops, Keith then flips over queen three of clubs and thankfully we get to take this one down. Wow. A few uneventful hands go by where we free bet, but to no avail and to winter down a bit further. Ace Jack off. First act, I raise to seven and we go three ways with the button and big blind. Flop comes, three of clubs, nine of clubs, ace of diamonds. So we have top pair, good kicker. Big blind checks the standard out of position. I opt for the passive route and check. Button decides to bet eight. Big blind calls and I think the flush draw out there, it's a good time to put in a raise to 35 pounds and only the big blind calls. None club turn, please, dealer, and he delivers the five of spades. I do decide to check now for some pot control despite the flush draw. Not sure I'd love that play in hindsight. River is another nine, though. Pretty good card for us. So now when the big blind bets third pot, I think we have a very easy call and we are good. Following that hand, we take down the blinds with ace queen, get moved off pocket fives post flop, and then make a tight fold to the button free bet pre flop. Looking down at seven six of spades, first act I raised a seven cut off with a 30 big blind stack and the small blind call, and we go three ways to a pretty nice flop of three six five rainbow. We have top pair bad kicker a gutty and back door so when it checks to me i see about 15 pounds for protection cut off calls meaning he's probably pot committed and the small blind folds 
To the turn we go, which is one of the best cards in the deck, the four of hearts, giving us a straight. I check, cut off moves all in for his remaining 35 pound stack. We of course couldn't be happier to call. And the river delivers the seven of hearts. No. no. So our straight has been stripped from us and now likely just chop in until it gets worse when my opponent turns over eight five of spades and takes it down himself. At least it was a relatively small pot. We move. Moving along to the next hand, we pick up pocket nines. When action folds to us in the cutoff, I raise to eight and the Button with a only a hundred and ten pounds stack raises to twenty three pounds. It folds back round to us. There's only one decision to make here. We are all in, and he quickly calls. All right, hoping for a low flop. Then it comes six six ten. Pretty good, but then the turn is the dreaded ace, and then a five on the river. He turns over ace king, and we move. Oh. On to king queen off now. There is a limper from the hijack. I decide to raise quite large to 15. I'm aiming to isolate the limper. But surprisingly, the big blind cold calls and the hijack calls. So now we go three ways and the flop comes. Ace, queen, five, two diamonds. It checks to us and I think on this board, we definitely have the range advantage. But our hand is very showdown driven. So for that reason, I do decide to check it back. And the turn is a brick, the two of hearts, and it checks to us again. For the same reasons as on the flop, I check it back. And now the river is the six of spades, another brick. And now the big blind decides to lead out for 75% pot, quite a large bet hijack is out of there and we have a decision to make it's the same player that we were all in against in the previous hand could he be using that to his advantage to try to scare me off i think he definitely arrives here with some ace x combos with a bad kicker but this time i do decide to look him up and glad i did because we are good as you can see i have raised to 25 pounds with the queen nine of clubs after the straddle was on and the low jack limped in. The low jack is 100% a beginner and I have been trying to target him and so this was the perfect opportunity to put in an isolation raise and go heads up with the low jack which is exactly what ends up happening and the flop comes six, nine, ten two spades and an incredibly wet flop got to proceed with caution here he checks it over to us and i decide to bet 20 into 60 which is a size that doesn't really make sense we need to be betting very big here or just check as betting 20 i don't think really achieves much but he does end up just calling our 20 pound bet and the turn is very good it is the queen of diamonds giving us Two pair, he checks it over to us, and of course, now it's time to value bet. There's 98 pounds in the pot. I decide to bet big now, 75 pounds, and he goes into the tank and eventually does make the call. Now, hoping for a clean river, it isn't that clean. It is the Jack of Diamonds. So now, a one liner to a straight. He does check it over though, which is a relief. I, of course, check it right back. And he turns over 10 7 of hearts. We show our two pair and are good. Well, I can't afford to find we go on to play a few more hands after that win, but nothing interesting he's, enough he's the for the vlog. So decide to wrap it up in for a total of 500 pounds and cash out for a net loss of 44 quid. minutes into session two we pick up ace king of diamonds with a 300 pound stack under the gun has limped i raise it to 13 to try isolate him and don't quite succeed when the cutoff calls small blind calls and limper calls we go four ways to a very nice flop king jack king with two spades 50 pounds in the pot it checks to me well you way here i don't actually know how we should play this do we slow play with this strong of a hand or do I bet 
to protect from straight draws and flushes. I think probably a bet is better, but I do end up checking it back. And the turn pretty much gives us the invulnerable nuts with another jack. Now two flushes out there, I think. This card is the perfect card to just check back and let our opponents catch up in the river and try get some value then. However, I'm not thinking quite so logically. I bet out 20 into 50 and everyone folds. We move. Following that hand, we end up breaking even for about an hour. We free bet ace queen off, button versus cut off, take it down, win a 15 pound pot with 10 nine of diamonds. Before arriving at this next hand, where we have king queen of diamonds on the button, the straddle is on, the low jack limped, the cut off limped, and we have an easy decision. This is simply a raise 100% of the time. I do raise it to 35, which I think is a good sizing. We need the cut off calls, so we do isolate successfully. In position, we go to the flop. Flop comes jack eight, five, two hearts. So it is a wet flop. Uh, he checks to me and I think the strategy on this type of board texture is to bet big or check We don't really have much though. We have two overs we have a backdoor straight draw and not much else So I do decide to just check it back the turn is the three of hearts completing the flush draw and now cut off leads 15 into 83 is such a small bet I think I have to call but don't mind the fold either because a couple of our outs aren't even live if they are a heart onto the river Which is the seven of diamonds Diamonds, now completing the 10-9 straight draw. So when he checks it over to us, I think this is even more reason to just give it up and check back. But no, this is the part of the hand that I think I absolutely messed up. I do go for a bluff. I bet 65 into 113, which I think is a blunder as played. I think our hand, our line just looks very capped. He does pretty quickly make the call and shows Jack-9 off and takes it down. Brushing that bad bluff to the side, we find ourselves in a pretty good spot with ace jack off on the button when there is three limpers before the action is on us. I raise to 20, the hijack makes the call, and then surprisingly, the cutoff goes all in. That's about 100. Uh, I think like a little bit more than 100, like 130 or something like this. This is cool. Less, less. Okay, more, sorry. 176. 176. Oh. I don't feel like you're that strong. But I'm gonna fold. Not long after, we opened the sexy ace king of spades in the hijack to 20 as the straddle is on. The cutoff calls, the straddler calls, and we go three ways to the flop, which comes queen, eight, three, two diamonds, we miss, and then the straddler donks, and I think we unfortunately have no choice. Up next, there is an incredibly loose beginner sitting on our direct right, as well as his mate, who's the exact same player type on my direct left. And when he limps in out of the cutoff, we are on the button with seven five of diamonds. I decide to just call, happy to invite the player on my left into the pot as well. And he does accept the invitation with a call, but the big blind then decides to raise to seven, which is very small cutoff calls. I of course call, small blind falls. We go three ways to a delightful three six queen all of diamonds. We flop the seven high flush. Pre-flop aggressor checks. And now the loose aggressive player on my direct right true to form donk bets 10 pound I contemplate raising but I decide to just call big blown calls as well and now just hoping to fade another diamond on the turn it is the five of clubs big blind checks cut off barrels 20 and now I think it's time to make a raise he only has 87 more behind. I could just go all in, but I raised to 50. He then goes all in himself. I, of course, call. He announces he has two pair and the river is the nine of hearts. It's clean and we take this one down. Next up, cut off raises to seven, button calls and small blind calls. We make the call in the big blind with eight, seven of hearts. The flop comes, ace, queen, 10, rainbow. We are absolutely dead. 
And small blind checks, we check, it checks all the way through. Turn is the jack of clubs, and now any king is a straight. It checks all the way through once again. River is a brick, six of spades, changes nothing. Small blind checks, and now I'm thinking no one's interested. Might as well take a stab at it with just eight high. I do, I bet seven, which is 25% pot. So this bluff only needs to work 20% of the time to be profitable, and everyone folds. Moving along to the next hand, it is a three-way limped pot with the low jack and high jack. We are in the big blind with ace eight of spades and the flop comes 10, nine, three, two spades. Very nice looking flop for us. Action checks over to the hijack who bets five into seven. We just make the call here and low jack folds. We go heads up to the turn, which is the five of spades, baby. Let's go, we complete our flush and we check it over to the hijack to see what he wants to do. He wants to bet almost pot again, 15 into 17. And now I think it's time to make the raise and I raise it up to 40 pounds and he pretty quickly makes the call. Onto the river, which is hopefully not another spade that could kill our action, but thankfully it's not. It is the queen of hearts. 100 pounds in the pot now. Action is on us. What do we do, guys? Do we go for a block bet here to try and do raises from lower flushes and at the same time get calls from his marginal hands and two pair and sets or do we just go for it and try cooler him with a large bet that's why i end up going for i do end up betting 125 into 100 and he goes into the tank and eventually folds it is a sign that i do need to increase my bluffing frequency the more we bluff the easier it will be to get paid in these scenarios it is something i'm working on and we move. Three. All right, boys and girls, on to the hand of the night. The straddle is on, hijack limped, cut off limped, and we are on the button looking down at pocket sixes. I think the best play here is just to call behind and see a flop, which we do. We go four ways and the flop comes six, five, seven, two spades. We drill our set. However, this flop is as wet as you like, naughty old flop. Ends up checking over to us and I think I have to bet here, charge those draws, hopefully boat up. I bet 50% or 12 into 23 and only the hijack is interested. So we go heads up to the turn, which is better than a boat. It's none other than another six, giving us quads, the coconuts, These one of the nuts. best hands we've ever had. And he checks it over to us. It's not just another six, it is the six of spades. So completes any flushes to cooler our opponent. So I bet big, I bet 50 into 47. Could maybe even go larger here. He does make the call and we go to the river, which is the five of hearts. Ugh, not the best card. Could potentially kill some action here as I just don't think he has a five uh, the way it's been played. He can't have a six. Uh, seven, five, he wouldn't call the turn with. I think most of the time he arrives here with a flush. I think that's what his range is mostly comprised of. So when we bet, we need to bear that in mind. I do have 380 behind. I think going all in for that reason is just not going to be very profitable. I do bet big though. I bet 125 into 150, targeting those flushes and he eventually Just called. Let's go. One of the biggest pots to date. Great for the bankroll tap challenge. All right, guys, finishing off the session with 6-5 of clubs. Our stack is nice and healthy. 620 we've got behind. I raise it from the hijack. We get surprisingly four callers and go four ways to four, ace, five, all of hearts. We have the wrong suit, unfortunately, and it checks over to us. We check and the cutoff checks it back. Turn is the three of spades. Checks all the way through again. River is the six of spades. Checks to us, and now we have two pair. Maybe we can go for some fin value here i do go for it i bet 15 cut off folds but the small blind he calls he unfortunately has a better two pair ace five off nice hand and we end it there wrap it up we were in for a total of 450 pounds out for 626 netting a profit of 176 pounds what an end to that session but Mistakes were still made today. I'm gonna keep pushing, getting closer and closer to Vegas.
Guys, I appreciate you all for watching. Um, leave your feedback, leave your comments. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.